Hello and welcome to part 2 of our Battle of Borlaeus breakdown, talking about Operation Emperor's Spear. If you missed part 1, we broke down the Emperor's Hammer, so if you haven't seen that one yet, click on one of the many links on the page to check it out. When we left off, Wedge had used the orbiting Lusankia to centralize and pulverize the Vong's forces as they tried to surround the New Republic base. A few people pointed out in the comments that, in isolation, just obliterating stuff from orbit isn't that impressive a tactic, but I wanted to take a minute to emphasize what made this as successful as it was before we get to Emperor's Spear. For the tactic to succeed, Wedge didn't just have to start firing. The whole operation, and the Battle of Berlaeus generally, relied on the New Republic's strong understanding of the Vong's culture and military tactics, goading them into attacking with misdirection and the idea that their tech was being used for heretical purposes. Then finally they were able to hit them with what were essentially Imperial tactics, something that the Vong had not been especially familiar with. So it goes beyond just being about big ship go boom. All of this is particularly well demonstrated by this quote from when Wedge was explaining the real goals of their faked Project Star Lancer superweapon. Quote, the purpose of the Star Lancer project is to dictate exactly when the Yuuzhan Vong in this system begin their all-out push against us. They know that the weapon threatens them. They have the example of Anakin Solo's lambent-based lightsaber to compare it to and be offended by. They know that we've appropriated their technology, and this galls them. So again, it goes beyond just being able to shoot their enemies. It turned into a thing where Wedge was able to control their actions in a lot of ways, and that's the truly impressive part of what he's doing. Continuing on, when we last left off, the forces under Wedge's command had been essentially left for dead at Borlaeus, a world vital for its access to the core, with the technically illegitimate government of self-proclaimed Chief of State, Puo, hoping to sacrifice Wedge's forces to buy himself and the New Republic some time elsewhere. Wedge turned the first part of the battle around in a crushing defeat for the Vong, but despite this failed invasion of the planet, there were still a considerable fleet of Vong warships in orbit, commanded by the former war master Sul Kang Law. Law commanded the battle from the Domain Hull warship, Domain Hull being one of the most prominent groups of Yuuzhan Vong, and their worldship being among the few massive Vong worldships still healthy enough to be in active engagements. These ships were very important to the Yuuzhan Vong's survival. In the downtime, after the failed assault, both sides were reinforced slowly by other forces from throughout the galaxy, including the former Rogue Squadron pilot Wes Jansen showing up in command of the Tanap Yellow Aces, an A-Wing squadron. When he arrived, Jansen started hitting on Jaina Solo, who was several decades younger than him, not knowing who she was, and it was all incredibly creepy. The Vong used a feint attack on the facility acting as the New Republic Command Center, crashing coral skippers into their shield, and using two capital ships in a low-orbit assault, disguising one of their agents as an injured mechanic to be recovered by the New Republic's forces after the assault ended. This agent was then responsible for trying to find and sabotage the Project Star Lancer ships, which were part of that fake superweapon we discussed earlier. The specifics of that were more discussed in the previous video, so if you want to check that out, you can find the link there as well. What followed were several small skirmishes, which took an especially large toll on the Lusankia. Rather than attempt to keep the massive vessel in operating condition, the weapons from it were slowly removed and transferred to other vessels, particularly the otherwise underpowered Errant Venture, a privately owned Star Destroyer belonging to the smuggler Booster Tarek. In secret, the interior of the frontal wedge of the Lusangia was reinforced with as much armor as they could muster, and then filled with high-grade explosives. With this preparation underway, Wedge began the final plans to retreat from the system. To the Yuuzhan Vong, it looked like a typical evacuation, and they began to hunt down the escaping ships. Two of their Matalocs, which are some of their better capital ships, went after the recently upgraded Errant Venture and were promptly destroyed by the unexpected firepower they found in return. Lusankia jumped to hyperspace in the direction of the world ship and was pulled out directly in front of the Domain Hall world ship, along with its protective screen of starfighters. It slowly began making its way towards the world ship, and most of the Vong thought this just meant that they'd be able to destroy their enemy more easily, taking the lack of return fire as a sign that they were on the verge of victory. Sol King Law was not aware of their entire plan, but he was able to catch on to the fact that the Lusankia intended to ram the world ship. Additionally, the Vong had been baited into staying too long with the promise of capturing Jaina Solo and the enemy superweapon, both of which held incredible importance to their war effort, they believed. They attempted to leave at the last moment, but a combination of the New Republic's own interdictors and tricking the Dovin vessels of the Yuuzhan Vong to activate their own gravitic manipulation in the vicinity of the world ship locked them in place. The Lusankia's escort was able to protect its engines from the attacking coral skippers until the massive warship collided with the world ship. In the collision, along with the massive amounts of explosions within the Lusankia tore both ships apart. The sole crew member of the Lusankia during this battle, Eldo Davip, was even able to escape. The remainder of the New Republic forces successfully evacuated the system as well, 
The Vong were technically able to force the New Republic off the world, but it represented one of the first major losses for the invaders. The world ships, especially the healthy ones like the Domain Ho one, were a scarce and incredibly valuable resource, and Soaking Law, one of their oldest and most decorated Yuuzhan Vong commanders, arguably their best overall, was killed. More than anything, the destruction of the Vong fleet brought the New Republic time to regroup after Coruscant, and paved the way for the battle that would begin turning war in their favor, Ebak 9. That's going to do it for part 2 of our Battle of Borlaeus Breakdown. Hope you've enjoyed both videos. I had a bit of downtime on the channel last week because it was release week for the Empire at War mod I run, so sorry about that but we should be back on track with more videos this week. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. Either way, thanks for watching.